Sounds. Broke the breaker bar. Yay! Yay! Yeah! <laughs> I love that. And the knuckle is now out. Well, that's what's left of the uh, axle seal. Hello and welcome back. It's a balmy 31 degrees. Today we're going to start with installing the upper and lower ball joints as well as cleaning up the knuckle, cleaning up the axle, and reassembling the whole thing. We're going to start with the top ball joint. Now this is the C-clip that we have to remove that's holding it in in the bottom. This is just a spacer. Alright, now normally you have to have a special tool for this. You can get in here with a screwdriver and push it try to get underneath on the back side with the screwdriver and lift down on it when you do that and on this tool here we've got the knurled end that we can sit right in here it'll grab the edge of that clip if I can get it to stay up in there and then we can use a screwdriver to push down on the back side of the clip and well, that got it started I do a lot of editing this down I need to get the boot, ouch, get the boot off of this as well. There you go. Leave the nut in there. And there's a really, 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 really sloppy ball joint. Now we're going to press it up and out. Kid you not, there's nothing not tricky about this. There's the C press. We're taking a little adapter that's going to bottom out on this lip on the ball joint stud. I haven't got anything that fits over the ball joint stud and hits this cap or the, the ball joint. With, I just can't make anything work. So, this is the only thing I've got at the moment. So, we're going to try to squeeze this in here as such, like this. We'll grab. See, the problem is, is I got the wheel well here, so I've got this breaker bar to help me hold it down. And this is going to be some really interesting finagling. That right there. Hold that down with my arm so I can try to get the worm in. Worm screw or press screw or. This isn't working so well. Nothing's working so well. <laughs> okay, where did the little ball go? Where did that dumb little ball go? All right, back to the fiasco. Found the little ball. Drop that back in there again. Let's see if I can get this up on here. It'll just barely fit. I do. That's gonna be fun. Well, here goes nothing. All right, that's not working. Dang it. Oh, this is never going to work this way. Uh, let's try again.
Well, I wish I was recording that because I tapped it right here and then it just blew the ball joint right up into the receiver. And there's what's left of our ball joint. Oh, wow. One tap. Mmm. <laughs> Which is not too bad. I'm gonna put this back in the warmer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Now we need the ball, the box with the little ball joint in it. After much of playing around with different size adapters and finding something that'll fit in here that where the threaded rod is down rather than up, now we can go ahead and start pushing that ball joint down in. That's pressing it right down in there nice. Probably could use the impact on this again, but at the moment I don't feel like it. Oh, come on, I went too far with it. Yeah, we've got about another eight to an inch to go. We're already halfway in. Less than a sixteenth of an inch to go. Now, if I was using an impact gun on this, you'd be listening for a tone change when it bottoms out. But I don't have that privilege at the moment. Feels like it's down all the way. So we're gonna stretch the seat press just a little bit and then we're gonna hit it with a hammer a couple of times. That way there, I know it is seated. joint is now in. And you see presses can be rented from almost any auto parts store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There goes that ball on the ground again. And now we got the room to put the snap ring in boot on it. I'm going to put this back in the car to keep it warm. Now that i got snap ring pliers, we'll put the uh, snap ring in place. Maybe. Sure that it's seated. How's it going? It's going. Going good? Yep. That's in. Now that we've got the ball joint in, the boot is on, the grease zerk is in. I'm going to take the nut and the counter pin. I'm going to put the nut upside down, thread it up just enough to protect the threads. And then I can uh, stuff the cotter pin in here so we don't lose it. It ain't going anywhere. Now we can get concentrating on the bottom ball joint. Next year, get in here, clean up your work area pretty good. Much of the 
about the dirt and dry them out of the way if you can. So the short clip that goes three quarters of the way around. There's no ears, no holes, no lip. What we're going to do is get a screwdriver, catch the edge, and we're just going to basically push it off. Okay, eye protection. It might go flying. Maybe it won't go flying. I'm going to keep it from going flying. There you go. Nice big ring. Let's get this cleaned up a little bit more. Okay, now. This is cast iron. It's really, really, really strong. The C press is not going to be able to push this through without some kind of assistance. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a propane torch on here. We're going to warm this up. It's only a propane torch, so it's going to take forever to warm up. But once this is warmed up a little bit, it'll ease pushing this out. See me going to the point where I'm bending the wrenches. Oh, that one didn't move that time. That's a good reason for it to not move anymore. I've already got it pressed down as far as I can get it with the uh, adapter on it. Oh, really? Yeah. And I gotta back it off. <laughs> and I have to double wrench it to get it to back off. Ow. down flush. Okay, yep. Yeah. Pops, it's moving on its own now. Now, 
I'll try to not lose the damn ball again. Beating on it, stiffened it up a little bit, but it's dirty. Yeah, let's clean up that board real well. Yeah, that's nice and clean. Put just a tiny little, tiny little bit of grease. Side of the bore. I get the new ball joint. We just got to find an adapter that fits so we can press this up in. Something that doesn't press on the boot. So make absolutely sure we don't damage the boot in any way. Adapters is none of them quite fit the way I would like them to. Oh, score! We found one that fits. There does not seem to be any pointer, dot, locator, mark, or anything of the sort. Sometimes they will mark a ball joint for which faces in or out because there's a slot instead of a perfectly round hole. But these are things that you need to be aware of and conscious of when you're putting in a ball joint. Like Crown Victoria has directional ball joints in it. Take the nut off because it won't fit through the bottom of this adapter. There we go. Put the nut here where we don't lose it. And then we'll get the seat press. And we'll start pressing this up and on to the point where it butts up against this. We'll put it in there. This is just, just to get this started more than anything. Right. Get the seat press ready again. It's not centered or balanced, it's going to cause things to go out of alignment, and that could be bad. And everything's square, straight. Yep, let's start pushing it in. This is about where we find out how strong this press really is. Looks 
like it's going straight. Now I'm going to turn the C press just a little bit to play it safe. And we're only going to be able to go a little bit more. And then the C press is going to be bottomed out. And I don't want to fall in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, it's going straight now. Okay, now the next part that I have to put up on the top, I gotta figure out. No easy one way, one shot way of doing this. Which kind of stinks, but. It's even all the way around now, good. Now the question is, is how much more can I go with this? I don't like this that much. Now, I think, so I got an eighth inch lip there and almost three sixteenths there. About a sixteenth of an inch and I can push this up more. By the time I'm done with this, no DIYer is going to want to do this. I'll turn it the other way so I can get more leverage. I think we're almost to the point where I'm going to bottom out against the tool. Breaker, bar, and socket time. I'm not going to double wrench this anymore. This is starting to get painful. Now, I see if we can break my brand new breaker bar. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that would be. You bat down there. Mm. Now, actually, whichever one of these is longer, I'm going to use. Uh, the Pittsburgh mm. is longer. Let's see if. Marble so right holds Michael up. Michael uses the older one. All right, that definitely feels like I've got it bottomed out against that adapter. Because I don't think. Nobody's doing this with an ordinary C-clamp, that's for sure. Let's try. Yep, bottomed it right up against it. Cool. <laughs> Progress. Okay, we'll just have to do it another eighth of an inch. Down some more. Now we gotta go up in another another eighth of an inch with this, and then I gotta switch adapters again. <laughs> I think 
it's probably there now. <sighs> Break time. All right, now let's get this the rest of the way down in with another adapter. The boot came off the ball joint, so I was able to use a smaller adapter so I don't have to worry about damaging the ball joint or the boot. Yep. That's the boot right there, came right off. We can press this on as soon as we get the ball joint seated. Yep, back to fighting with it, it's working. This is why I should have greased it. A little less than an eighth of an inch to go. seated. Lower ball joints in, upper ball joints in. Whew. Now I gotta put the snap ring on it, put the grease irk in it, and then put the knuckle back on. But before I put the bearing and seal in the knuckle before I put it back on. Now I'm gonna put this piece back on. Remember the orientation of this, the little tab faces towards the rear. A little cup right here that's your steering stop, which hits here, goes up the front. We've already put the boot back on. We'll put the nut on. And then we'll grab the snap ring. Get the snap ring on. I already did this, but I'm not sure the camera caught it. Battery died. This is going to hurt if I'm not careful. There we go. Now we'll just make sure everything is seated. Center it right up the front screwdriver and a hammer just to give it a little tap to make sure that there's no sorry about hitting the stand make sure these things are all the way in and they are so let's get the grease zerk in place always remember it's an angled grease zerk so you can get to it from an angle makes sense make sure you put it in an orientation that you can get at it by turning the wheel so when it's up on a leaf, then you're getting your oil changed and your lube done, they can get at this Zerk. We're going to set it up so that the Zerk goes towards the front, seeing as the inside wheel of a turn is always turned the most. This will give the biggest gap. And just snug. Don't crank down on them because they'll break real easily. Bottom ball joint's done, installed, and ready to go. Now let's get working on that knuckle. Well, that's the end of that battery. Oh, that's my oldest battery. 
I bought this battery June 19th of 2013. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. But it, it's, it's starting to fall apart. Uh, but I'm surprised that the, the cells inside this thing are incredible. Yeah, you buy a new one. They're, they're not they're, as they good. don't. They don't last all that long yeah. per charge, but they don't go dead permanently in six months like my NICADs did. The NICADs, I can't. They won't even charge anymore. See, that's why I was trying to take that ABS sensor out so I could clean all of this up. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it broke. Mm -hmm. It's looking a lot better. We're going to put this on first. Make sure we got everything lined up properly. We're going to put this in place first. Now we're going to put the bearing in, doing all of this before I put it on the vehicle because I have to make sure that the seal's going to go in and that the axle is ready to receive it. So I'm going to go grab some my anti-seize again and I'm going to coat this so that it doesn't stick to that. It sits right there. The O-ring is already on the bearing. O-ring sits right down here on the bottom. I've already coated everything with anti-seas so that this will go in and hold everything together, get these bolts started. The bolts already have a uh, thread lock on them. Oh wow, I didn't expect that. The bearing dropped right down in there. That's what happens when you get it all cleaned up, I guess. 17 millimeter bolts. I'm only going to be able to get these bolts down just so far, and then that thread lock, yeah, there it is. The thread lock is going to start hitting. Okay, that one's already tightened up. Yeah, it figures these bolts are going to be stubborn. Cold. Probably better off grabbing a wrench at this point. I'm losing the feeling in my fingertips. All these little specialty kits. Now this is rusty as heck, but at least there's still some metal to left to it. try snugging these up until this thing's mounted in the vehicle. Mm. These are supposed to be 67 foot-pounds of torque. I'm lucky this wrench is cooperating with me this well. Mm. smooth it down more and take the high spots off. Alright. That's not absolutely perfect but there's no way I'm going to get it perfect without putting it on a lathe. 
This is all cleaned up already. So what we got to do now is grease the daylights out of that before we put it into the seal and grease in under the seal. And we'll put the seal down in. Now be careful when you're putting these in that you've got a method to drive it in evenly and flat. I'm using a wheel bearing adapter that is the same size. tone changed. Absolutely sure. That looks good. Let's double check. Yeah, that's flush. It looks a little high on that side actually, so I'm going to give it a little tappy tap there again. It's seated. All right. And then it's install it in the vehicle. Just because these things are prone to failure, water gets in, we're gonna fill the inside of this thing with gobs of grease. The whole purpose of this grease is just to make sure that no water gets into the bearing. Now what's going to happen with all the excess grease that's here is when I put that axle in, it's going to squeeze all of it off, off the side of that bearing and out into the seal. Hopefully there's not so much in there that it blows the seal out. all of this nice and happy before we start spreading stuff together. Coat everything a little bit into the splines. It'll help it slide into the bearing a little easier. We've already cleaned all of that up with wire, wire brushes. Let's get this axle nut off. And in goes the knuckle. Right, first thing we're going to do is take the top of the knuckle, face it the right direction, and we're going to slide that up on that ball joint. We're going to try to. The nut, bottom of the dust shield is folding because it's rusty. It's not tight, but bring this back down. Now we're going to pull this out, and slide the axle in. Bottom. 
be back tomorrow so you can see those bolts going back in. But basically, we're 90% of the way there now. This tool right here is getting a little corrugated. You know, edges on it, knurled. Corrugated, that's not corrugated. Let's try that again. All right, got the knuckle all cleaned up. Got the surfaces all cleaned. Got the machine surfaces all cleaned on both sides. Got the bore for the speed sensor cleaned out. I've coated everything with anti-seize. Got the brand new bearing assembly. We're going to take this and just basically set it right down in there. Wait a minute. No, we're not. The dust plate's got to go on this first. Never mind. <laughs>